All right. Happy New Year. It's January 1st, 2013. Welcome to another Nerd Stalker podcast. It's the best of 2012 <laughs> show. And I I am Greg Gloria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. And I'm with Adolfo Ferranda. Howdy. And we also have joining us from lovely Vancouver Island in the west side of Canada. We got uh, Sean Charles. Hey, guys. Happy New Year. Good to be here. Cool, and we have another uh, nerd stalker uh, uh, person, or uh, I guess staff writer. We want to call her. She's uh, here in San Francisco, not with me, but in Knob Hill. We got Emma Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> a- a- Emma's a little shy, Hi. so we have to give hey, her some room. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> a little bit, of, little bit of a delay there. A little bit of delay. Okay. All right. So um, anyway, let's get started with the show, man. It's going to be fun to do this Wait, wrap up. Did you hear me? Yeah, yes, we, gotcha. we hear you loud and clear. So, um, okay, let's 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 kick this off here. We got uh, Adolfo's picks here. We let's talk about Evernote, Adolfo. What do we got there? Yeah, man. So, um, Evernote is is my pick of the year, the big one. Um, that I don't know if everyone would pick, but um, several years ago, uh, I did an interview with the CEO of Evernote, Phil Libin, and um, and he told me he ex- he described Evernote as being an extension of your brain, right? And to me, that just it basically sounded like some uh, startup BS, right? And and I didn't when I came ac- when I came away from the whole thing is I just didn't get it right at the time because it sounded like an over glorified sort of FTP kind of thing. Mm. Um, mm. What I realize is that now in how it's grown and become so popular is that they're everywhere. They integrate with everything, right? So. They were so smart about their, you know, not only their UI and the design from the get-go, which a lot of startups, when they were starting, didn't quite get, um, but also to make um, their API super accessible to developers. So that's why when you use various apps and desktop applications, when you click a share or something like that, or put to cloud or something, there's typically an Evernote option there, right? Because of that. So it was a lot of this early thinking that, that got them sort of u- ubiquitous everywhere, right? Um, where this comes across for me in a daily basis where really transitioned for me is scanning. So I try to go as paperless as possible, right? With my scan mm, snap, mm. Fujitsu, I love you. Um, I scan everything I can, right? And it nice. used to be where I would scan something and just it would be local on my computer, right? But nice. now I'm doing that less and less. Now I'm selecting the option of just create PDF, go right to Evernote, right? So it's mm. there. And the beauty of that is that out of the box you get OCR, right, for free. And this is all free pretty much unless you start use, start using some serious data per year. Um, so you get automatic OCR, you get fantastic search and tagging capabilities all in the cloud and, and you know, a local option as well. Um, and uh, also, you know, they've done recent updates and UI improvements as we speak, you know, on and they're multi-platform too. They're platform agnostic. So you have Android, you have iOS, you have, you know, Microsoft uh, and and they're everywhere. And not only that, they have other applications like Evernote Food, uh, Hello, Evernote Hello, Evernote Trunk. They have a Moleskin uh, tie-in with Moleskin, uh, Skitch, Evernote for Business now, which is huge, right? Uh, Web Clipper, Clearly, which I use on a day-to-day basis so I can do easy reading of web pages and stuff. Penultimate nice. and Peak, um, which is a little iPad application. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. Do you guys have any experience with Evernote or anything? Oh, yeah. I, I love Evernote. <laughs> I don't know. I, I ever know, uh, you know, I think it's enabling tablets to be used in schools. Uh, you see all the kids with school at school with tablets, at least in college, and they'll they'll just use Evernote to just uh, upload, download some stuff. So it's really kind of cool that way. I don't know, Sean, what, any experience with Evernote on your end? Yeah, I'm actually a big fan. I started using it just this year, too. And uh, I saw an interview with Phil as well. Mm-hmm. He really impressed me. Uh, they were talking about... Uh, corporate culture and uh, yeah. Yeah. all those fun things and um, talking about how they use the product uh, internally and that's part of how they develop it and the culture behind it. And I was, I was actually really impressed by, uh, by what, I, uh, what I heard from him. So, yeah, I'm a big fan and uh, hope to use it even more in the new year. Yeah. Got it. Got it. What was that post oh, okay. you guys did about their, their culture? What do they, they, like, clean your house or do your laundry or something like that? What was I read... Some post. I think Sean posted or, or Greg. I can't remember who. Oh no! I think I. I Which one was it? I think I had one like that where <laughs> they actually uh, 
they, they're paying for someone. I think we talked about it in one of the shows actually yeah, this yeah. year in 2012. Yeah. That um, actually uh, Evernote uh, gives you the stipend to uh, have someone come clean your house. That's right. As that's an employee right. of Evernote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. And uh, I thought that was kind of cool that. corporate culture. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's just it's just really. Neat. I mean, they're just one of these companies that are really on top of it. You know what I mean? They they iterate super fast. And they're, you know, like that little example right there, internally, uh, they just get it, right? So I, I think yeah. this is a very important company to watch and, and not a, you know, they're not getting a ton of press, but it's, it's definitely, a, they're a player for sure. Hey, Emma and Knob Hill, do you use Evernote? Um, yeah, I used to use Evernote, but then I started, um, a lot of our managers like Evernote and they worship Evernote. Um, but I stopped using it after they acquired Skitch. Hmm. Oh, really? I don't know why. It's another topic. But where where are they keeping all this data? I get a little paranoid. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have some they've had some issues, are, right? Yeah, I have some friends that are lawyers <coughs> that they they feel the same way, right? So they're using more of a like a local sort of Dropbox solution in encrypting their stuff before they send it to Evernote or just like, yeah, keeping it local instead. Definitely some of the stuff, you know, you probably don't want to put like your social security number in there or anything like that. Um, but for things like receipts and, and stuff like that, I think is it's a, it's a good option, but yeah, it's, there's so many like options to it. Also, it can almost be overly complicated, the whole paradox of choice thing. And there was, you know, a big argument, um, with the Skitch application or, or acquisition where um, a lot of like hardcore Skitch users were upset because it seems like they sort of, uh, you know, initially ruined the experience. I know, I think they yeah. just released an update for it where uh, they tried to address a lot of the, um, the outrage, you know, for, for that particular application, which, is a, which was and is a great application. So I have to agree with you there. Okay, cool. Let's go to the next best of Adolfo 2012 list. We got what? Oh, what's a list with, without XBMC? You're Super talking nerd. about XBMC. Yeah, yeah. So, nerd. so when you think of like uh, media centers, right? You think Apple TV, and let's face it, they're pretty much the only player in town. I mean, how many people do you know that have like a Google, you know, TV type of, you know, on a on a widespread consumer adoption Roku basis? Movie. Not really, right? Um, yeah. So XBMC is the the flip side, right? The other side of the coin to an Apple TV where you have like Apple TV, super ease of use, um, limited options, whatever. Uh, XBMC is total customization, open source, all kinds of stuff. So it used to be hardcore in the realm of Uber nerd kind of stuff. But the, as of late, they've um, try they're trying to address this, you know, um, this steep adoption curve. Uh, they redesigned the XBMC hub site. It's xbmchub.com, by the way, if you guys want to check it out. Um, this is all free, right? And uh, it's uh, they've released an instant uh, configuration. They're calling it instant configuration for you know, to uh, install XBMC. It used to be really difficult to configure XBMC. Um, and it runs on multi, you know, hardware and platform on everything, right? So we're talking Apple TV, we're talking Mac, Android, Raspberry Pi, Windows, iOS, Linux, Xbox, and it comes in a ton of languages. Um, and this is a full-blown media center, like, um, you know, music, movies, TVs, photos, programs, apps, add-ons, all kinds of stuff. Um, so it's sort of under the radar, I think, but there's, it's, oddly enough, there's, there's widespread adoption among, among the nerd, nerdists out there. Cool. Well, anyway. Well, no, yeah, you talk about that a lot in the podcast, so I'm always excited about what he's doing. If you've seen this guy's living room, everyone, let me tell you, it is total <laughs> yeah. nerd stalker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally a Mac stalker. Mini connected. I'm looking at it right now. Mac Mini connected I, I, to my big screen TV. I, I oh, think, perfect. You know, perfect. I think if I decided to disconnect a wire, he would be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I fear the vacuum cleaner. Believe me. When it goes out, I'm just like, oh, God, what's going to get messed up now, you know? Oh, no. Yeah, that's great. Oh, okay. Let's go on. Let's go to uh, Google. Let's talk about Google. You, Google. you love Google for 2012. Yeah, man. Huh? Yeah. So this is one of those companies that everyone's been talking about, right, like all the time. Uh, but typically what you read are the, the big headlines of Android versus OS, Android versus iOS, you know, and that's really not, or, or actually Google versus Apple, when really um, 
I love I love Google applications, period. And I love the Apple hardware. I just got, you know, the iPhone 5. Um, I went from an Android device to an iPhone 5, and, you know, I just rave about this thing all the time. Um, but I miss my Google app. So um, I was happy when they recently released all these updates to, like, things like Google Drive and Gmail and Google Maps was recently released and um, um, all kinds of stuff. I love the Google experience on there. Um, they, they enhance, and, and what you realize is they're sort of, they are platform independent. Let's face it, they're an outstanding search company, thus an outstanding advertising company, right? Super profitable in that respect. Um, and then you see other things that they're doing with like Google Drive and how they're taking on uh, Dropbox and Evernote to some extent, right? And Microsoft Office now too, uh, aggressively. Um, their ubiquity isn't, isn't quite um, across the board like a Dropbox and Evernote, but they're getting there. You're starting to see more share options to Google Drive, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, right? And uh, I'm mm -hmm. finding my yeah. adoption rate, my daily usage of, of stuff going up. I mean, you know, we're using Google Hangout here. We use Google Docs, you know, here on Earthstalker and stuff. Um, and uh, we, and uh, other edge case kind of things like we're seeing like Google Now and Google Glass talks of that. We see other sort of research lab type of um, things that they've done, um, applications where they failed, right? Google Wave, remember? Um, and they're not they're not afraid to to do this kind of stuff. And this is important for a large enterprise to take this sort of startup mentality and chances and to fail, you know, often early and often, as they say. Um, to succeed, um, and Google Plus, right, is is a huge undertaking. Um, some people only see it as a, a Facebook play, but it's a lot of other things as well. Um, <laughs> it's uh, community forums, right? It's a photo album, um, all kinds of yeah. stuff, man. So, I don't, so Google, so much to say about this company, you know. Well, I, I use Google in the uh, enterprise uh, side on our in our company or in my former company. God, I actually have to say that. Whoops! Now. Whoops! Uh, oops! <laughs> oops! oops. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, I love the integration of uh, it into the enterprise. So whenever we set up a uh, a a Google Calendar meeting, you could hit go to Google Hangouts, and actually, we don't have to use Skype anymore. We could just go to the Hangout and. Everyone shows up on the Hangout, and we just have a conference call. It's really cool. I don't know. You know, Sean, what, any experience on uh, – tell me your greatest Google experience. Yeah, well, Google's been, uh, you know, with the Hangouts this year and the Google Glasses, you know, those look really interesting uh, with the technology where you're a wearable camera and smart screen and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, that really impressed me this year when I saw them skydiving with the Google glasses and <laughs> yeah. uh, the Moscone Center. You know, I mean, hang out in the air. Yeah, I mean, Steve Jobs did a lot of amazing uh, uh, things in his life, and actually, I guess that's definitely notable for 2012 uh, was the passing of Steve Jobs. But uh, the Google presentation when they're parachuting out of a airplane with the Google glasses on and that, I was really impressed. And uh, what they've done with Android, the amount of progress they've made in the last 12 months, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's talk about the next one. We got, okay, <laughs> who put the Yahoo thing on my production sheet? Yeah, man. You, you Adolfo? That's right, that's right. So Yahoo, my dark horse of the year, um, they came in just, at the last minute, and oddly enough, it was at the expense of Facebook's marketing mistake, right? Um, so we heard about the Instagram fiasco, and Marissa Mayer uh, took over this company as um, CEO and recently and really capitalized and did things that um, management couldn't uh, seem to accomplish for whatever reasons. Um, and... Uh, spruced up a couple of the most important applications early on uh, in Yahoo's, um, you know, um, chest, if you will. Uh, Flickr being one of them, probably one of the most important ones, I think, that has yeah, a lot I of think that's the most potential important right now. Right. Um, Arguably, um, their UI has been vastly improved. Their sharing options vastly improved. Their mobile and desktop um, solutions vastly improved from UI user experience. Very important stuff, right? Um, that was probably the first indicator for me to take a second look at the company. I was about to write them off completely, but I, you know, I've talked to you like several times about their 
their developers, and I've been to Yahoo several times, you know, and meeting, you know, those incredibly smart um, developers and researchers there, and they lost a plethora of those people to, you know, Facebook, Google, and Apple mm. uh, recently, and uh, they still seem to have some outstanding talent there, uh, luckily. And you can see by the um, the fruits of their labor here, which I'm sure they could have done a long time ago with um, with Flickr. Uh, now and fortunately for them, uh, Facebook um, just weren't, and you know wow. Instagram went through this fiasco here to get uh, adoption, a lot of usage wow. uh, happening here. I mean, they have some work to go, to do mm -hmm. still on Flickr to to make it you know to the level of Instagram, but it's a it's a hell of a <coughs> hell of an improvement and and nice to have an alternative. Now the next would be Yahoo Mail, right? Yahoo Mail used to be uh, is is I think the most used uh, if. Last time I checked, stats-wise, um, email application out there, web-based, you know, application out there, used to have advertising and all this, you know, big mess of a thing. They've cleaned the UI. It looks pretty much like Gmail now, behaves as such. Um, really well done improvement. Um, they still have some issues with spam and, and people getting their accounts hacked, which they have to resolve um, mm -hmm. ASAP. Um, but yeah, so you know, kudos to Marissa Mayer and the you know the team at Yahoo. Uh, they're definitely worth taking a second look at. Um, we should uh, keep on our eye on them to see if this is the beginning of something that can be consistent, or if it's or if it's just a fluke. No, that's great. I, I, I uh, I'm, I'm an AT and T guy, so uh, we use Yahoo Mail, uh, but um, I use Google Mail as well. But um, you know, Flickr, I think, is the <laughs> is the one shiny object in the in their chest. So I think they need to do as much as they can with it, and I think they're they're trying. They're trying at least. You know, I don't know, Sean. What do you think? Well, are we going to talk separately about the Instagram fiasco there at the end of the yes, year here? We we is are. Is that a separate story? Okay. We, we will well, count it in mind. Sure. So um, <clears throat> I had a reason randomly to check out Flickr again this year, um, uh, and <laughs> many uh, people did. Many people did, and um, I was really impressed. And actually, one of the, the, the coolest things about Flickr is uh, their iPhone app is actually great for image editing. And I would say that their filters are as good or better than Instagram's, and you can add text, and there's just more, wow. Uh, wow. more yeah, opportunity. Right. So I that's played right. around with that this week, or last week, and uh, I was totally impressed. That's good. Okay, thumbs up for social media, Sean. On, on Flickr. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Like, like, Huzzah. and he's gonna yeah. share. Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> That's great. Okay. We wow. Need to bring back huzzahs. Oh. Mm-hmm. More often. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Let's on the best of 2012 show here with Nerd Stalker. <laughs> uh, we got my picks now. Let's talk great about picks. pads. Let's talk about pads. God. Uh, 2012 was the year of the pad, I believe. So let's talk a little bit about that. And uh, let me introduce some of my picks of pads. Picks of pads. Got a, if I say that three times fast, I can't say that. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so anyway, I, you know, I think there was a lot of adoption. There's a lot of uh, the tablet releases were, were a big big thing in 2012. And, and also, I, I think they're starting to become a you know, taken seriously like laptops were in its early days uh, by IT enterprises, right, Rodolfo? So, yeah, totally, man. Totally. Uh, in fact, you know, they, they seem to be, uh, you know, I don't think they're quite at that point yet of like every, a must, must, you know, have type of thing, but it's, mm, it's darn mm. close, man. Darn oh, close. man. I, it, and with all the cloud cloud applications going out there, it, it's mm -hmm. definitely usable right now, right? Yeah. So let's talk about some of the tablet releases of 2012. Um, uh, we got the Google Nexus 7, which is the, you know, uh, uh, that was kind of kind of cool to have there. Um, let's, let's see, we got uh, that queued up there. Yeah, so um, the, the Nexus 7, it was just a, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, CNET says was this the best small tablet. Uh, you know, arguably against the iPad Mini, right, but uh, right. the, the price point on the iPad Mini is a little higher, mm -hmm. as you can see. Um, so I thought um, that was not a bad uh, pick for the year mm -hmm. there because uh, a bunch of tablets came out. Well, and its bigger brother, the uh, Nexus 10, I think, uh, isn't a bad one to kind of, you know, you should take a look at that one real quick. Um, I think that 
Uh, the Nexus 10 is definitely a tablet you could consider if you're on a budget and uh, you don't want to go the Apple way. Um, you could go with the Nexus 10, pictured there. Uh, really want to, you know, CNET said is one of the most promising iPad alternatives. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 399 Okay, maybe. Uh, you know, to check that one out. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, let's go down the list here. We got uh, the iPad 3. Gosh, the iPad 3. Um, <laughs> I, they had two releases of iPad this year, right? Uh, so yeah, I think that that's uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that that was something interesting. And, and you throw in the mini release, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, what do you guys think about the the uh, the Apple uh, Pad offerings this year? Kind of kind of quick with a couple of them, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, uh, so it almost got by everybody that there was both a third generation <laughs> and fourth generation and fourth, iPad. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So when I've talked to people about it that aren't necessarily totally in the geeky world, yeah. uh, they're like, "Why do you, what? Like, they're, yeah. they have no no idea because it doesn't look any different." Uh, as we know, they just, uh, you know, one of the best things that I saw about that was that everyone wanted a faster iPad. But exactly. they also wanted a better screen. So what they did was they put the um, the Retina display in, but they right. forgot to upgrade the processor enough, <laughs> and so nobody got right. what they wanted. <laughs> and then right. so on the fourth generation, they fixed that. They got the screen and the processor, and you know a few other things here and there. But mm-hmm. literally, it looks the exact same as a as an iPad three, yeah. um, and uh, but it performs like like. Uh, like an iPad 2, because the iPad 3 was actually benchmarking lower than the iPad, or the iPad 3 was benchmarking lower than lower the iPad than the 2. Wow, really? too, yeah, with the Retina display. Yeah. yeah, so I think yeah. that uh, they made a little switch up, and I think consumers weren't too upset. I mean, if I had just bought an iPad 3, I'd be pretty choked, but oh well. Yeah. I bought an iPad 3 for my yes, mom. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, Luckily, my mom can't up. tell the difference. Can't <laughs> yeah. tell the difference. And she doesn't do benchmark tests, so that's good. Right, right, right. <laughs> but she Adolfo's loves it. That's the thing. The I think this yeah. is a big story, though, is that my mom, who, you know, I've given her desktops, and uh, she would, they would gather dust, right? Um, we would never do this type of, you know, um, like video type of calling with each other or anything. Now that she has this iPad, she doesn't know what version it is. Is, but we're doing FaceTime all the time with each other, you know. Yeah, yeah. Nice, and, um, that's awesome. And it's that's like the I think the the consumer test is a, is a huge thing now. Um, talking about the iPad Mini, um, I was a little bit hesitant at first because you you know you're not getting the Retina display, right? And, right. and um, so I told um, some friends, oh yeah, you should buy the Mini so I could you know play around with it and look at it without buying it at a time, and. Um, revel in how horrible the screen looked but i was really impressed with the screen mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. it was sh- it was shocking and I, I thought it was going to be you know difficult to read after you know going from retina to that and uh it's just as good i think um i don't think a you know for for me it's it's a it's a great it looks like a great option uh i think everyone was hesitant at first and then once they started playing with this thing and they got it people were really happy with it i got to agree adolfo yeah, i love it i i uh Played with one the other day, uh, and uh, for an extended period, and then I picked up the new iPad Four or fourth generation, excuse mm. me, <laughs> whatever we're calling yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I know. And um, <laughs> it, it was, four. it felt so heavy, like it did. So, it was totally, totally, yeah. Yeah, and the screen, yeah, it was amazing on the Retina, but the smaller screen yeah. means more pixels per inch, yeah. and you know, I, uh, I, 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 I'd love to pick up the next generation. I can't wait for the Retina mm-hmm. iPad Mini. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what everyone's waiting for too, right? Yeah, I but think a lot of are you know, right. yeah, I think uh, early this quarter maybe. Yeah, that they said. So. Yeah, I'm really concerned about the battery, though. <coughs> you know, that Retina, it's not, it's not easy on that, on that battery and that CPU. Ooh, so good I'm point. wondering how they're gonna point. deal with that. Uh, solar panels on the uh, yeah, <laughs> totally. The Wearable helmets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, um, airless Emma, recharging. Emma still, uh, I know. I was going to ask her. Not airless, but I mean, uh, yeah. Emma, you know, airless Emma, recharge. What's what that? do you think, Emma? What's your thoughts on the on the whole iPad what? iPad Mini? Yeah, I'm still here. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, that's that's the beauty of Apple, right? It's actually very strategic. 
um, I, I think it's awesome that you know Apple will sometimes you know I, I don't I, I think it's deliberate, right? So sometimes they'll let you have something that's not so awesome, but um, right along the line they'll have something already there, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I think Apple is genius in terms of holding back in terms of hardware. Mm-hmm. And I think that, mm-hmm. you know, given that Jobs passed away, they, they needed something frantic, um, and that's why they released all this cool stuff, right, one after mm-hmm. another. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it's... it's un- okay, well, we <coughs> we lost our correspondent from Knob Hill here, San Francisco, but... Uh, hey, I'm wondering what back. you guys think of this. Um, it looks like Apple's doing this, and Emma, I think, kind of touched on this, some of this. Um... Apple seems to be doing these quick iterations on their hardware. You know, there used to be a longer cycle, and I'm already hearing about an iPhone 5 in, or iPhone whatever, revved up I, iPhone in March. Um, Whoa. So we're going to March, October releases with Apple, you think? We'll see, man. They seem to be revving very quickly. Um, oh, we, we, you saw, yeah, we saw many. Re- so there was actually three major releases last year, weren't there? You know, um, I mean, not of all hardware, but, you know, like we had March and then we had something in June or May, late May. And then we went all the way to like uh, August, September, October, that type of thing, time frame, right? September probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I dig it. I mean, I like I like seeing this. I think with phones, it's, <sighs> it's an issue um, because of these two-year um, commitments that you have, at least mm. here in the U.S. with like Verizon, at and do, do you have to deal with that kind of stuff? Sean? Sure, two, two to three, two oh, to three year, geez. and the thing about here in Canada is that we pay about double for our cellular, cellular usage that you do in the U.S. What? Yeah, probably another third, at least another half. So I mean, you know, uh, it's you're hard pressed to get anything for much less than a hundred bucks a month with data. Hmm. Oh my god! Whereas in the That's states, can't you get something pretty good for about fifty, sixty? Well, in, in India, yeah. they have it for yeah. like less than a hundred. Oh, let's <laughs> less not go than there, Brick. Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, fair. with taxes South and Korea, data, hello. you know, you might be able to get down to eighty or ninety, but that's just for an iPhone or an Android, right? You know, basic plans. So yeah, our our uh, we feel it even more here in 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 the north, in the north, right? Wow. And then if you're buying phones outright, are you still getting full cost? Of the, you still have to pay full cost of the phone if you want to switch phones with your existing plan or something yeah, like right. that. Yeah, right. Exactly. So you're Same looking thing. like Same here thing. we're looking at seven hundred dollar iPhones or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. very similar. Yeah. Wow. Wow, dude. Okay. Well, let's move on. Let's go to some of my other picks. Uh, Samsung. Uh, <laughs> you can't count them out. Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> they're the biggest uh, consumer electronics company in the world now. And so uh, the Galaxy Tab is one of my uh, think picks that you should probably look at and try to figure out how to get your hands on one of those babies, a little alternative, low cost alternative. Um, so the Tab. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll get that queued up in a second here, but uh, the, uh, the the tab is uh, I don't know I, I think I don't know Dolpha. What do you think about the Samsung's hardware? Uh, they, they seem to be playing in all playgrounds. Yeah, uh, Windows. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, totally. You know? I mean, and they just released the big story um, yesterday or whatever, which was a very quiet story, but it's huge news. And I've been mentioning this before. They've been playing around with this operating system called Tizen. Right. Oh yes, yes. And Tizen. Um, so Google. they've been yeah, having totally. issues with Google, you know, about Android and Google saying, you, know, "You guys are really our only distributor, right? They're the number one by far Android distributor um, device out there, in device manufacturer." And um, and Samsung just, you know, they want to do their own thing. And you know, if Google's going to be m- making their own devices via Motorola or whatever the acquisition. Then you know what's what's to say that Motorola doesn't get you know whatever better access or something to Android or sure. Google, obviously since it's the same company, so they are hedging, and it makes it makes perfect sense if they want a hundred percent. Samsung wants a hundred percent of the profits. Why not create your own operating system? Um, no, what do you think, Sean? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the uh, tablet wars have just begun, and. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's this year was a fierce battle, a lot of production, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of court time, a lot of lawyer fees, <laughs> right. and uh, I think that uh, at the end of it, um, it's just the new big business is technology is the big business now, mm-hmm. and uh, it was yeah, we'll see. I I've I've been I've, I've been impressed and I've been disappointed in in both 
you know, Apple yeah. and, and Google, mm-hmm. and, and we'll see what happens in the new year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and poor Dell, they had to bow out of the race. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I won't go there. <laughs> we'll put a we'll put a stick in it for that. Yeah. Well, let's go to Mr. Dell was too busy trying to keep his uh, teenage kids off Instagram, sharing their location this year. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's, that's that's where he was busy raising yeah. his daughters. I think he forgot oh, about the tablet. Well, let's talk about the controversial tablet of the year, the Surface RT Windows tablet. Nah. So, um, oh. oh my God, you know, so you know. You know, you guys got me all excited when Adolfo and Sean told me about. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, Adolfo went to the the developers conference and 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 you know, oh, told me all about the fancy Windows 8 platform and how it was going to work. Right. So I was all excited to see the tablet, and then suddenly, oh shoot, it's RT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's not Windows 8, and guess yeah. what? You don't have any applications. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Um, uh, you know, overwhelmed in one sense that it, Microsoft is kind of trying to, you know, make a play for a lot of things. Uh, they're trying to be more visible in the developer community, but uh, a total downer on, oh man, you know. I, so what? What do you guys think? Did they just have to introduce something this year, and that's why they had to play it that way, or what? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think there wasn't a choice really for them. Um, it, you could tell that this this really it's not ready you know it's just not ready mm-hmm. um there you know it's it, which is unfortunate too because i mean what a massive advertising blitz that they um that they you know released for for the surface itself i mean windows 8 is a different sort of animal um that's a you know different discussion but the surface in terms of hardware um yeah i don't know man oh you know, well, you know we, we see them all the time at uh sf new tech now you know Doubling some of their little wares there, but uh, and it looks really good. But yeah. if you don't have any apps that runs on it, and and right, Google decided to you know put another nail in their coffin by saying you know we're not going to develop any apps for you guys. Mm-hmm. How about that, uh, Microsoft? Uh, so I thought that was kind of that was kind of interesting when they they said nope, not developing any Windows 8, nothing. <laughs> you know, Google says so. So what do you think, Sean? What do you think about the Windows uh, thing? We talked about this on the Social Times show. It's I, you know, it's it's expensive. The RT. I mean, what is an RT? Who does their I, yeah, marketing? I know, man. What, that's what is an RT? A retweet? Terrible. That's what I was thinking. Uh, uh, it's a terrible. Microsoft uh, road, road retweet. Track. I know. <laughs> if anything, in the last year or two, RT means to me is retweet. Yeah. So whoever's doing. I don't. I just don't even know what happened there. I can't even. Oh, call yeah. yeah, yeah, was that, yeah. It was a uh, developer term. I can't believe they rolled out with that win RT. I can't. I could not what believe you, it. Right? What are you thinking? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, we have <clears throat> we spent a million dollars on our marketing, but we decided to go cheap release, on the name. Yeah, release plumber yeah. talk, right? Yeah, and the yeah. plumbing talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go on. Um, I think I have a couple ones from the book companies. The the Kindle updated their Fire. Uh, this year, and Barnes and Noble came out with the HD. So I think those are two things of note to try and talk about that just kind of complicated things. But you know, with their content, um, they're not bad choices to have as a tablet, right? What do you think, guys? Uh, well, the Kindle Fire is, yeah, it's, or um, I don't know, man. It's it. I know. You know, it. I don't know. <laughs> Underwhelming. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would have to say. It's yeah, a, I mean. I- there were such yeah. hopes, right? We everyone was talking yeah. about it initially, and all oh, being the, the, a great kiss, uh, Christmas gift, and this and that, and then uh, you know, the the iPad Mini rolled out, and then all these you know great well the Nexus what you know rolled out or whatever, and then oddly enough, uh, people just wanted a paper white, right? The, <laughs> yeah, the Amazon <laughs> just the new, a new version. reader, the, yeah. the new yeah the better I'll version. I'll decide to use it as a paperweight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was surprised with their progress. I'll give them that. I didn't think it would even be that good. But I wouldn't even remotely thinking about it as a tablet at this point. Mm. I mean, well, yeah, you want a beefed up e-reader, mm. great, but why not just get an e-reader then, mm-hmm. right? Uh, let's go on to the next topic. Let's talk about Instagram. We talked about photo apps earlier with uh, Flickr. And let's talk a little bit about, we'll have Sean introduce that little debacle they didn't went through a few weeks ago. Mm. Um, but, you know, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, sure. uh, Facebook oh, bought Instagram right. um, in <laughs> April. Believe it or not, it was only April last year. Wow. And uh, and uh, is Instagram going to be its own little separate thing, or is it going to be Facebooked a little bit? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you see them doing with uh, uh, Instagram? 
Hey Sean, let's let's talk about that debacle. Let me go into that. <laughs> okay. well, you're you're excited started. about talking about that. Well, 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 introduce it to the audience. Okay. What the debacle was. Yeah. Right. So, okay. Very simply, Instagram puts out a message that says we've updated our terms of service. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, we're using language. Let's. I, I'm not a lawyer, so we're using language that makes it totally clear that we have the rights to sell your images or basically do anything we want with them within uh, the scope of the internet. That is how most users understood it. Now, how they actually meant it, that's still another discussion. So, everybody freaked out. I think people love to vent more than they love to leave services. Oh, I'm going to leave, I'm mm -hmm. going to leave. But I don't really think it hurt them that bad. Mm -hmm. But the amazing thing is that a company with all this money, Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, would put out this message. Mm -hmm. So what I want to know is, did the marketing company really screw up that bad? Mm -hmm. Or did Instagram try, Facebook, try to pull one over on their users and realized mm -hmm. and backed out and said, nope, they're not ready. Mm -hmm. It is all public data. If we want to get into the fine print, this is where I'm getting started. It's all public domain, mm -hmm. really. And at the end of the day, you don't have a leg to stand on. You're using these free services. You're giving them all your life data, which who knows what they're going to be mm -hmm. able to do with. True. And... It's already happening. So all that basically they said is, oh, by the way, we want you to be a little bit more aware that this is what's going on. And as soon as they told them, everybody freaked out. So whether I am skeptical whether it was just a marketing mistake or they actually were trying to mm. shift forwards mm. in their ownership of our data. And mm. to me, that is just beyond mind-boggling because Ooh. this is the new social era we live in where our lives can be will be, I think, stolen, and identity theft is going to go to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> identity but theft to a whole new level. I love ser it. Seriously, with your pictures and your images and your emotions and everything, mm -hmm. these guys are going to own us, mm -hmm. and <laughs> this is just the beginning. Yeah, so true. we have to just take a step back and go, everything we do, including this podcast right now, mm -hmm. is public domain, mm -hmm. and computers and big data and the cloud is sucking it all in, yeah. and who knows what's good, what they're going to do with it. Right. I'm done. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. So let's let's just say one thing. Thank God Getty Images didn't buy Instagram. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say that one thing. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. But um, but yeah. I, I you know I I I'm not sure exactly what went through their heads, but man, I, I it made you guys go to different services, right? So did that really turn you guys to go to Flickr, Rodolfo? I did. I did uninstall Instagram uh, after you know hearing the the clarification of the of the terms and you know that kind of stuff. I sort of you know I see a lot of my friends still using it, right? Um, right yeah. But like I said earlier, it made me look at at Flickr, and Flickr is a very viable um, alternative. Uh, not hundred percent there yet, but definitely um, looking very good. Um, mm -hmm. But what made me question it more is like, I don't know if this is a story so much about Instagram as it is, as Sean sort of alluded to in, in a way, is, is a story about Facebook, you know, and granted that Facebook bought Instagram and we don't know where this, this you know, where this, it, was it a marketing issue or was it Facebook strategy? Because you remember the brouhaha way back when of Facebook uh, Beacon? remember it's like if you oh. buy something and then suddenly all your friends see what you're shopping and maybe your boss sees that you bought a flask or something of alcohol and then right. oh, wow look at you're a drinker you know maybe oh, well, that's okay. what he does with his free time <laughs> right. um it became a, a big Hello. brouhaha and then facebook uh, backed off but it you know this was right. a very uh, valuable thing for do to do and we see this sort of pattern with facebook and i think people are being conditioned to unfortunately have this sort of um distrust gradually of Facebook more and more, which is not, I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing for Facebook, but their strategy seems to be sort of like um, do something, ask for forgiveness later type of pattern over and over again. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to cost them or not. Right. And they're able to do that, Adolfo. That's the point is that they're so big yeah. that they can do it right. and then ask for forgiveness, yeah, right? Because yeah, they so, are the number one by a landslide. So I'm almost thinking that that's what they were trying to do with that Instagram thing. Mm -hmm. They were trying to edge the dial, mm -hmm. and they nope got a little bit back yeah. because to really understand that language, you got to go right into it. You'd have to interpret it. It, it could be a court of law. Mm -hmm. People could debate that mm -hmm. how it was meant, what was supposed to be done. But these guys own everything we're putting on there for the most part, and 
uh, I think we got to just take that in with a grain of salt for 2013. How do you how do you justify an eight billion dollar acquisition to your shareholders, right? I, right. I mean, without monetizing somehow. Right. Yeah. So I, th I think they just a little tried to nudge it a little bit more, and nope, not quite ready. We're not quite ready to know that okay. they that they we, really own yeah, all the data. We need to make money somehow on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Oops. Okay, let's give them a boo. Yeah. All right. Uh, that was a bad uh, call. That was a bad call. Yeah, that was a, definitely a bad call. So let's move on here. Uh, uh, let's uh, go on to Sopa and Pippa. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. perfect. You know, we might as well talk about We'll get the negative stuff out of the show already. Uh, but anyway, uh, you, you know, Sopa, right? The Stop Online Piracy Act and the Protect IP Act of... Uh, I don't know, 2012, which got soundly defeated. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, but, uh, you know, th they were really looking uh, ways of helping the media companies uh, fight piracy, right? That, that was the intention. And it, just like any other law in this country, the intentions just went awry, right? So, um, uh, you know, and I think the biggest thing, I, I, I know, and Adolfo is pretty good about this, is the ISP blocking mm -hmm. uh, provision, right, mm -hmm. that... That they were really hotly debating, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where you know they could unplug anybody essentially, right? But uh, I don't know. I, I mean, are there going to be for 2013 uh, a, a SOPA two and a PIPA two? Yeah. In fact, I think we're already seeing a bunch of them in action. There's a lot of um, what I'm hearing is behind the door sort of meetings, um, closed to the public type of stuff that's happening. Not good. Some countries are threatening to, um, you know. A silo off their internet kind of things and you know the internet is a very fragile sort of you know <laughs> for lack of a better term uh, a series of tubes and pipes right <laughs> yes um, right <laughs> so it, it relies on a, a lot of a lot of these relays right and all these servers everywhere um, around the country for, to it function correctly uh, and when someone starts fiddling with this um, that's not good uh, yeah. And then when we, when someone wants to use it and to, you know, break into your home and, and uh, fine you or arrest you for something, um, for a questionable usage, that's, that's, that may not be good also. Well, non-tech people trying to regulate a tech thing. Wow. And, and kudos just... to whatever celebrity brought up Sopa and Pippa, because Lord knows, you know, the general public would not have gave a damn had someone like said. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. Because this stuff puts you to sleep. <laughs> Believe me, Greg puts me to sleep like talking about this stuff. All the time. <laughs> yeah, I decided to bring the best of 2012 at the Sopa yeah. and Pippa. But it's important stuff, man. Yeah. It's yeah. important stuff. and uh, But it's like taking I'll your vitamins, you know, it's like, That's ugh. Right. Okay. That's right. Hey, you know, if they're stopping the water in the pipes, as Adolfo said, we're going to have a problem with that. So we don't want clogged pipes. So anyway. Hey, just to let everyone know, Emma dropped off, uh, Emma Lamb dropped off of this uh, this podcast, yeah. but we'll make sure to get her next time. Uh, I think it's no, no, she's issues. good. She's good. She yeah. has a lot of good opinions. I talked to her offline, yeah. and she's pretty sharp about a lot of woman. stuff. So anyway, very smart. Okay, let's, let's go to the last one. I, I think you guys are going to cheer for this one. Let's, in fact, let's get the applause meter on it. Uh, let's talk about uh, Google Maps. <laughs> you know, I think we were going to follow up with. I, I wanted to focus on Google Maps because um, obviously they were the story of 2012. Um, the iPhone uh, 5 got re uh, got released with iOS 6, and guess what? It didn't work. So and and. And it, and when the CEO of Apple says you should use another third-party alternative, and we're so sorry, um, in stepped Google Maps. So I think uh, Google Maps is one, just one of those things that I think has been around such a long time. It has a long history. How can you uh, how can you not uh, not like uh, Google Maps? It's on my Android phone. I use it with the navigation. It gets me everywhere I need to go, and it finds everything that I need to find. So. I don't know. What do you guys think about Google Maps? Well, I think a huge story was that how dependent they were on uh, iOS users as well and Apple users, right? I think that was a huge story was yes. not only when Apple started uh, creating their own, you know, initial excuses for a, for a map application, there was a massive drop off in Google Map usage and that you know is juicy data that that makes them lots of advertising money that they want. Um so that I don't think it was particularly good for either company or, you know, Apple, I think more from a PR perspective, 
but I think it was of the utmost importance for Google to have Google Maps not only on iOS but every freaking where they can because mm-hmm. that's their Absolutely. game. Absolutely, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. So total yeah. codependency, huh, Adolfo? Total <laughs> codependency. At this point, I think in this stage of the game. I mean, so do you think? Do you think? Wait, well, yeah. uh, let me ask a question of Adolfo. Do you think Apple will try to come back with their own Maps version and fix it? Oh yeah, I think they're gonna. I think they can continue try to iterating, but they're so far behind at this point. You know. Yeah. So far behind, I think they're a distant number two, maybe. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Go ahead. I, I saw, sorry, Sean, I cut you off. No, no, not at all, of course. I just, again, I'm amazed that with the caliber of people that are involved in these projects, <laughs> that they would l- release something like yeah, this. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't take a lot of research, a few hours to check a few cities to realize <laughs> <laughs> there was, you know, it's not, we're not talking micro, <laughs> micro, you know, we were talking big mistakes. Right, right. Um, oh. And so that escapes me. So then, again, I want to know, are they covering up? Are they blaming someone, or did they actually do it on purpose? Did they well, know? Well, they fired their whole team, basically. I think right. that's, you right. know, they were the scapegoats. Right. So did they not know that? Did they not even take an hour? Because if you'd gone through San Francisco, you would have seen that there just it wasn't a comparison. Because I did when I first got it, mm-hmm. and I did Google and Apple, and there was no comparison. Mm-hmm. That being said, people say that Apple won, and this is, goes back to Adolfo's point, did they really? Because now um, Google Maps had updated their, their app mm-hmm. when they put it back on iOS, so it was even better, yeah. more like the one on Android. Yeah, right. It's but lovely, again, sure. all that, back to what Adolfo said, is that I don't think anyone really won in that. I think that... Uh, mm. Mm-hmm. It just gave them a bad reputation for releasing products that aren't ready, and and I think we're all tired of that as users. Well, and and, and that was the first one in a long while for Apple, right? And I think we all kind of were expecting the world, you know, our our level because we're paying Apple prices mm-hmm. is here, mm-hmm. and it should be here, right? Um, and mm-hmm. we just decided, wow, you know, and and I wondered, you know, I wondered if, you know, I, you're right, I cannot believe. That someone didn't check out the maps, but I got a feeling, you know, the train had left the station <laughs> and they better be on it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Basically, Tim Tim was gonna get on that stage and introduce that damn map regardless if it was worth yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well there was talk too that I think their licensing deal with Apple with with Google actually was up um, at a certain point, so they'd have to redo some sort of deal and I, I think Apple right was this is one of the theories was was that we have to take this short term pain in order for this long term gain type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh didn't quite pan out, I think, like they thought. Yeah. I think you nailed it right there, Adolfo. That's it. Is that they had an agreement and they were trying to manipulate and persuade mm-hmm. and, and outweigh each other mm-hmm. and nobody won, I think, at the end of the day from all that. Yeah. No. I mean these aren't uh, yeah, these aren't dumb people. Cute. Apple, you know, no, obviously they're yeah. super smart people. I mean you yeah. I mean we all see that, you know, the Google car videos and driving them, you know, all over the earth. We see people with backpacks in the freaking Amazon mapping, you know, with those Google mapping devices. And what does what does Apple have? You know, an acquisition or some licensing of Tom Tom or, or whatever. Come on, there's <laughs> the, the, you need they Google's had an yeah. army of people out there doing this kind of thing. I, I don't think Apple's dumb enough to 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 miss that. Well, you know that that's the show, guys. I mean, uh, any any you guys have anything for 2013 you want to let everyone in on or you want to let someone know about? Well, I'll put it out there that we are uh, covering MacWorld. You guys. Uh, oh, you know, awesome. For Nerd Stalker, we'll be covering the whole deal and <gasps> talking about it. And uh, yeah, so look out for that. That's at the Moscone. I don't have the date uh, handy right now, Greg, but. Uh, no, no. We're, we're looking at the uh, the end of uh, January. End of January. Yeah, yeah. Um, 30th, uh, 31st, and 1st, I believe. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about going there with you. I'm going to bring my portable. Uh, recording gear and we'll we'll record everybody yeah I, so I, uh check it out everyone yeah. macworld i world uh register for the event uh we will be there all over the place in-depth coverage yes and, awesome. um, what are the dates on that what are the dates uh 30th 31st and 1st i believe or oh, 31st 1st and 2nd i believe well it's, it's towards the end there i believe it's 31st 1st and 2nd so we'll, we'll have to 
yeah, check that one exactly there. But uh, hey, Sean, what do you have planned for 2013? I think uh, Social Time TV. Social Time TV, baby, and just ex- you know, just uh, <coughs> That's right. you know, I uh, have really spent a lot of time in the last year or two uh, listening more than talking, and I think 2013 is about um, trying to make sense of all this and putting social media into a business perspective, not just uh, mm-hmm. fun and games, but how to really uh, leverage it. I was fortunate enough to have a an offline business background. And the principles are still the same. So I'm really now, for 2013, ready to put it together because, like all of us, none of us had any social media experience. How can yeah. you say you've had social media experience before four or five, six years ago? Mm-hmm. It, didn't, it wasn't there. Right. So um, 2013 for me is now all about putting social media with social business and uh, hopefully helping a few fine folks. Well, I think you will, man. You're, you're a good guy. You know how to... You do social media and so you app, apply it to business. So I think things will be good for you in 2013, my friends. So. Sounds good to me. Yeah, let's see. Well, you know, we have a lot of things going on. Um, so, you know, I have the two podcasts with you guys. Uh, and for 2013, we're going to continue that on. Uh, we'll probably try to get a little more content. I'm doing a lot of books with McGraw-Hill and some of that stuff. So uh, yes. there's a new book. What's your next one, Greg? What's the next book? Uh, this one here. Uh, oh. Duck. Um Basically, uh, the five business secrets of Facebook's uh, improbable <laughs> brilliant CEO, Mark Zuckerberg. So that'll be uh, releasing, I believe, in February or late uh, January around Macworld, believe it or not. So um, we'll have an interview with uh, the uh, Katarina Walter. I can't, sorry, I have my thumb on there right now, but <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> I have my thumb on Katarina, but. Um, uh, uh, t- well, okay. Can't, I can't focus anymore, Sean. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. No problem. You're doing great, buddy. Okay. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll inter- interview her probably um, you know, in San Francisco here. She's going to San Francisco for Macworld. So we'll get a live interview with her. We'll put her on Google Plus and uh, talk about her book. So it'll be fun. Love it. Well, I, need, cool. I need to mention also, I forgot, that our partnership with O'Reilly. Um, I'll be reviewing uh, Dave Gray's book, um, uh, in God, the name escapes me. The Connected Company is the name of the book right now. Oh, um, nice, nice, so nice, nice. Yeah, and we'll be announcing some other um, books and, and things also pretty soon. Wow, I, you know, uh, reading is good. Reading is good. Reading. Sean does a lot Riff. more reading than I reading do. Reading is so, fundamental, um, my friend. I, you got I it. need to catch up. I need to catch up. But anyway, a great show, guys. I appreciate it. How do how can listeners get a hold of you there? Easiest way is at social media, Sean. On Twitter, anything from there, or go to my website, socialmediashawn.com, and uh, you will find me for certain. And you, my friend. Yes, so you can find me at uh, on Twitter, at NerdStalker. It should be, I think, down here somewhere, yeah, um, in a blurry, blurry, unfocused camera here. Um, and, yeah, you can check out our content all over the place, uh, NerdStalker.com, and our podcast. Check us out at iTunes. Um, also, you can download the audio and uh, video podcast. Um, and give us a five star rating, please. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be wonderful. Goodbye. How about you, Greg and, and Emma? Oh, hey, please. <laughs> I'll, I'll do Emma. Uh, you can catch her at uh, Emma at nursesoccer.com, and uh, she's on uh, Facebook, and um, I'm sure she'll be happy. <laughs> be happy to yeah. friend you if uh, I believe she's you, at Emma Lamb right. too. E M A L. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank at you, Emma Lamb. And uh, and. Um, yeah, I'm Social Greg on Twitter, uh, aka Social Greg on Twitter, and uh, you catch me at uh, Social Greg at NerdStalker.com. And excited to do the next year of podcasts with both of you. So I am truly pumped for that. It is an honor, my friends. <coughs> it is an honor. Yes. Oh, hey. So anyway, uh, be careful out there, and uh, see you in uh, a clean 2013. Anyway, anyway. Take care. <laughs> Thanks. See you guys. <laughs>